Okay guys, so in this really brief tutorial, I will try to show you how to use the tools we are using this year for the homeworks. And I actually expect that you learn how to use this tool for your professional uh, career. So these tools are the reason why I switched from my beloved GCC to LLBM toolchain. Uh, LLBM is a toolchain that is supported by Apple actually, but it's completely open source. So you can see the whole implementation details. And they have been doing a great job on, in terms of tooling. So they are, besides the compiler and the toolchain, they are providing a lot of tools that are actually are meant to uh, make your life easier. So this is the only reason I switched to LLBM. You can actually use, use these tools no matter which, which, uh, which toolchain you're using. Like you can use GCC and some client tools. But for me, it made more sense to use the, the whole tooling system. That's why you install it. LLBM release 10 uh, when you started this course, right? So let's start, let's get started with the tutorial. So basically the first, so we're going to see two tools. One is Clang format and the other one is Clang TDI. Clang format is, format is a tool to automatically format your code and make it more readable and professional. And Clang TDI is a static analysis uh, tool that will help you uh, to write much better C++ code. So let's get started. So, sorry, it's always the same. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the mass hub tools wiki. So I just uploaded two configuration files. Not here, actually. This virtual machine is extremely slow. And then you will go to Clang Tools config file. So this is something new. And then you will. Uh, working. Okay. Save link us. And then you will go to your CPP Homeworks repository. And then you will save this configuration file and also this one. Uh, sorry. Saving us. That's it for me, right? And then let's open a terminal. Let's go to CPP Homeworks. And then if you do git status, you will see two new files. The only thing is you need, actually these files should be hidden on your repository. So if you do something like LL here or LS, you will see the two files in here, but should be with a dot. This, mean, this means that it will be hidden. Uh, and plan format, you just, Add a bot in, in front format and then just plant the di in a dot and then just can put this right then get status uh, okay then you just add this file to your repository add clan tools uh, config files and you just say clan format and also clan tdi so why you want, and then you push to your repository. Why you want these tools on your repository? Because this will give you, uh, so these are basically the configuration files, sorry, not the tools that I am using in the Homeboard bot. So if you want, you can have the same configuration and this way you will have the same feedback on your local machine that in the, uh, your wiki, right? So let's see how this works. So let's pick Homeboard 2 and then let's start from, a, from nothing actually. And then let's create two directories, task one and then task two. And then let's go for task one, for example, and then let's create the, the .cpp file. So task one.cpp, right? Let's start working right away with this file and then let's pretend that this is the task we need to achieve. And then int main, and then let's do it like this. And then std c out. Sorry. Sorry. Hello, clan former. And then that's it. And then somewhere here, return zero. And then, yeah. 
So if you see this code, there's nothing wrong with this code. So if you actually compile task on the TPP, you can run it and it's working. Only problem with this is that it's extremely ugly and it's impossible to read. So in order to avoid these kind of issues, uh, so we are using clan format and we are forcing you to format your code. So you have two ways of doing it, uh, this. So the hard way is using the terminal and the easy way is using the integrated tools that I gave to you on the very first tutorial with Visual Studio Code. So one thing you can do is you can actually run clan format and then you do it with for this file and then the output so on the standard output you will have the formatted version of this file the other thing you can do is you can prepare the dash y um, that uh, stands for interactive and this will format the file within the file so if you now open the same file it's completely formatted right the other thing you can check so let's break the format again let's so it's as simple as breaking like this you can actually do clan format and then you can do dry run and then one is as error and then the file and this will basically give you an error and this is the type of error you will see on your wiki if there is an error so let's for now let's add this file and then let's add task one uh, homework two right and i am not even adding a CMake list file, nor build, nothing. So before I even get to build your homework, the first thing I will do is I will be checking for format. So if the format is not correct, then my friend, the homework will not be corrected, right? So make sure you, you do format your code. And then let's go to the wiki, and now you will see an error. So in the meantime, so something you can do is okay let's show you how you can fix this on the text editor so you have two options so the first one is um, doing format document or if you're actually using the configuration i gave to you you have this format on save so whenever you save the file so whenever you save this file, it's Control S, it will auto format it for you. So if you don't like this auto format on save, just disable and then make sure you format it whenever you want. And then let's see if this is already done. Okay. So the second homework, format correct? No. So I didn't even build or check for any other thing. So error, code should be clank formatted. So if you really want, your homework to be checked the first thing you, you need to do is to format your homework and let's say that you actually don't like the format i gave to you so if you go to the manual of the tool so you can search for the style option and then you will see uh, style okay that you have multiple styles predefined on the tool so let's pick webkit for example and one thing you can do on your CPP homework on the root directory. So, uh, okay, let's, and then git commit, let's fix clan format. Now we have a clean repository. One thing you can do is do clan format and then you pick the, the, your own style and then it's webkit and then you just stamp config. This will print the configuration for this particular uh, settings to the standard output. And one thing you can do is redirect this to your clang format tool. And now if you do a git diff, you will see that some lines change it, change it because it's a different uh, style. So this is something you can do. And now if you save or if you format, some stuff will change. So pick the style you want. You can play with the configuration file. And then I would not check that you're using my format style, but at least you're using your format style. So if you change client format, uh, then you can pick uh, virtually any uh, style you want. I would not complain if you pick an ugly style, just do whatever you want. I will only complain if there is an error on the, on the style you pick. 
So that's one thing. The other thing is let's uh, touch CMake list txt. And then this we don't care. And then let's open the CMLX file and then let's see the second tool that is a static code analysis tool um, that is Clan TDI. Before I forget, I found an error on the settings I gave to you. So there is this header insertion. So this is the tool, the configuration I use, but I ask you to remove this because if you, for example, now do STD and then you do string and then you just press enter, uh, you will get an automatic include here for the string. So this is not really important, but then I don't want like uh, the, the tool doing stuff for you that will prevent you from learning. So minimum required version, let's do project task one, and then add executable task one, task one.cpp. And now something you can do is like, you can do, not you, CMake, export, turn this flag on, and then now when you run CMake, so if you create this directory, and then you cd onto this directory and then you do cmake you will see this file that is compile commands.json so basically these are the b lines for your project and most of the tools from uh, from clang tools will be working with this particular file and will be giving you information about this so now, for example, let's pretend that I am doing another mistake. That it will be, for example, uh, first of all, let me go to my root directory and I will do git checkout. This will go back in time and pick the original format file. So, and now if I format this, format document, okay, this is how I end up before. Now let's pretend that I create a variable called A, right? But then, for some reason, I'm not using this variable. So if you see, this is what I call early uh, feedback access. That is, for me, super cool. And that is that variable A is not being initialized. So there is one problem here that is being reported by Clang TDI. So whenever you pick any tool, any funky tool, any fancy tool from your IDE, always ask yourself the question, how will I integrate this into my tooling system? So you will have the, this first warning. Uh, you will have another warning about CPP check. And then for example, if you run it manually here, so if you do clang TDI, and then you do dash P, and then you indicate where is the build directory. And then what am I missing? Probably the file. And then task one CPP. You will see an error. Right, so the error, the variable a is not being initialized. Right, so there is one thing here, and if you actually try to now commit this, so git commit, uh, just add a clang TDI error, and then you push, you will see the same error on the wiki. So this is something that it would be impossible with IDEs because usually these tools are not really flexible, let's say, and also it's hard to configure. So you can say, oh, but I don't know, uh, Eclipse also warned me about this. Yeah, but how do you integrate this into your, into your whole, your ecosystem of development? So in this case, you will see the error reported on your text editor. I gave you um, some tools on, on the website to actually whenever you make, so you have the option to, so whenever you make, you will see the error. I will show you how. And then after all, you will see the same error on the wiki. So no matter what you do, you do we will catch this error. So it's still working. So in the meantime, we can go to the website and download the, the utilities. So if you go to Homeworks, you will download this zip file. Let's see if this is already here. Not yet. 
Did I push? Git status. Git show. Yeah. Okay, let's wait then. Then let's copy the downloads and then over to here and then unzip over to then let's remove this now let's for example let's move cmake and then test to task one uh, for now let's let's forget about testing the test so this we don't need for now so i only want to show you now git checkout and this is good git status so i remove the file and then git knows about this just git checkout the file you have it back again i want to remove the sorry the test folder this guy okay and here on, on the cmake so try not to open this <laughs> because it's ugly CMake code. So basically this will allow you to check for clan TDI on your build and also uh, for the format. So let's open code. And how you use these tools. So you have multiple options. One would probably the most easy one is to include and then CMake and then static. So how is this call? Uh, CMake static analyzers dot CMake. So with this you will basically include this utility and then if you do now CMake dot dot whenever you do make if this is working okay whenever you do make your build fails and this is the same tool working on different places it's still clang TDI error variable A is not initialized and this is CPP core guidelines Blah, blah, blah. This is a warning that is being popped up. It's the same warning that you see on the editor here, the same one, and it's the same one that if this is working, you will also see on your computer. See? So, uh, build succeeded? No. Why it's not being succeeded? Because variable A is not being initialized, right? And this unused variable is a warning of Clang, not TDI, but the compiler. And this is because I, I didn't put. Uh, W all for a warning. So this is how you can actually make this stuff work for you. And the idea is that you should check all the stuff, and that's why I gave to you this CMake um, directory uh, to, with these utilities to check that everything is working before you submit your homeboards. Otherwise, you will be going back and forth with the wiki, and it's going to be probably painful. So I hope you get some intuition on, on these tools. Uh, I would say that it's very likely that in a few years this will be standard in the in industry and probably in academia as well, because this is, for me, it's the way of going, like whenever you pick a tool, so forget about the text editor and wherever. So this clan format could be integrated everywhere. So you have it on your system, you can use it in a shell, you can use it in the text editor. I am using client format, the same tool on the homeware bot. So whenever you set up a CI, you can actually ask client format to format the code for you. So this is the way of going, the modern way of doing development software, not having one magic IDE that does the, the, the job for you, but then you cannot integrate any of the IDE functionality anywhere else. You cannot add this to the CI, you cannot share this configuration uh, with some other colleagues. So this is extremely flexible and it's getting a lot, a lot of attention, especially Clan D, so it's not really common, but it's super cool and it's really working. So if you check your settings, the C++ autocomplete from Visual Studio Code is completely gone, disabled, because Clan D will do it for you but after it in inspect the build. So with this compile command.json, it will search for some stuff and it will give you feedback that is completely uh, tied to your build, right? So anyway, if you have any questions about formatting or clan TDI, just let me know. I hope this makes your code better. Um, okay, thank you for watching.